everyone and welcome back to Nora's Cove. If you're new here, I'm Yoshida. So today for our Money Monday, I wanted to do something different today. I wanted to do a different aspect of budgeting instead of just always showing you the continuous things that I do every month, every week, or either on a daily basis. So today we're going to talk about ways, five ways that you can save on a low budget or low income. So let's get started. So the first way is a dollar a day, a dollar a week. So I can, well, I didn't really come up with this concept. Years ago, late teens, early 20s, my grandfather was alive at the time. And I told him, I said, Grandpa, I said, I don't know how to save. I can never save any money. And at this time, I was on my own. Yes, I've been on my own for a very long time since a teenager. So he said, baby, he said, all you have to do, he said, there's 52 weeks in a year. He said, save a dollar a week. At the end of the year, you have $52. That's $52 that you didn't have last year. I said, hmm. <laughs> so it clicked. But in my mind, again, he also said, he said, also, that's four quarters. He said, and then he broke it down from every change possible. So in my mind, which will lead to number two, which we'll get into, some weeks I only save four quarters. And I save them. So that leads us into the second way of saving. So the second way is spare change. This is pretty much the typical way that I save. I've been saving this way since my grandfather taught me that. So years ago, any spare change, because I am self-employed, any spare change I got, I just put it in a way in a can, in a uh, water bottle, you know, those water container things. That's how I saved. And let me give you a good story of how that spare change can add up. I was getting ready to get married to my husband now. I had an apartment and it was time for my rent to be like paid before I could move out. And I had like a cell phone bill or something. Whichever one it was, I was like $100 short. So I had been saving my spare change in those water jugs. I got me, my daughter, and my niece. And because my daughter was a little younger, I think she was around four at the time, um, I had her counting the really small ones and pennies and dimes. That way it kind of occupied her. But my niece was a little older. She was probably, um, matter of fact, my daughter was like five going on six, I think. Yeah, I think she was five going on a six. So my niece was like 10, 11. I had my niece counting the dollar bills and the quarters. We had over, and I told them whatever was left, I'd buy them ice cream. Sure enough, we had over $200. I was able to catch up that little bit I was short, which was like $100, plus treat them to ice cream and some other little things from the dollar store. So that is way number two that you can save, spare change. Trust me, you will be surprised. When you see people going to those coin machines, some of them just only been saving for a little while. Some of them been saving for a long time. Um, I've, I've used the coin machines before, but I have literally went into like a gas station or 7-Eleven to see if they need any change. And I have just counted change because I didn't want to pay that fee. So that's another way to save. If you don't want to pay the fee for your coin, the coin stars or whatever, um, go somewhere like a, if you have a 7-Eleven in your area, they're always, they have like their own in-store change things. So they're looking for change. And now, especially during a pandemic, you know, there's a shortage on coins. So they're asking you to either donate coins or either use your card. I've paid, I've paid sale bills. And I'm talking over $200 with coins. So that is really my number way, number one way to save. So definitely spare change. So let's get into number three. Now, this one is a little controversial. This is the savings challenges. I say that it's controversial because I've made a post about it before. And a lot of people said, well, I'm not making enough or I'm not doing enough. Find the savings challenge that works for you. There are plenty. Um, even if you find one that you like, but you may not, cannot, you may cannot afford all of the steps on it, stick to the one that you can go to the highest. So let's say the dollar one, where it's a dollar for the first day, or you mix them up until you get to a hundred, I think. And let's say the day you pick out $61, you don't have $61. Go back to the dollar day. And then when you have 60, put in that 60, maybe write yourself an IOU. This to me is a great way. Savings challenges, I've seen plenty of people do these savings challenges and save so much money at the end of the year. So now let's get into number four. So this one 
It's just taking a very small amount of money out of a paycheck and directly having it directly deposited into your savings or either another account not associated with your bank. That way it takes a while for it to get there. Once it gets there, once it gets there, you're more apt to not even go to this bank. It may be across town, but this is what I would do if I got a check. I just have, it could be five, ten dollars. It kind of goes back to the dollar challenge. So a lot of people say, well, I can't afford to save. You got a dollar somewhere. How many of us blow a dollar? I know I've blown several dollars. We've lost $20 here and there, $5. So if it's nothing but $5 a paycheck, even $2, you don't have to have your uh, your job take it out. You could do it automatically, have it taken out, and you can schedule it in your online banking system. You can schedule for it to be taken out every two weeks or every, every paycheck, just $2, $2 or five, something very small, something that you know that you would not miss. And now it's time for number five. So number five, you guys, this is something I learned from my aunt. She, every time she got paid, she'd get $10 worth of dimes, $10 worth of dimes. And she'd take those $10 every paycheck and she would put that in that water cooler um, bucket and save it, $10 worth of dimes. So. And you're more apt to not go and break open your water jug for $10 worth of dimes. You know, you would just because you don't want to go in there with that change. If you're like me, I'm not ashamed. But you would rather not go with that change of $10 worth of dimes. So every paycheck, save those $10 worth of dimes. So now I just have a couple of bonuses that I wanted to throw in there. Some things that you may not consider, especially if you're just not a saver like myself. Maybe have someone take your credit card that you trust, that way you don't spend it. That same person, you can trust them with your $5 or your $2 if you don't have a bank account or you just don't want to put it in your bank account because you're afraid of you seeing it there. Give it to someone you trust. If your husband is better with money or your significant other is better with money, even our children sometimes are better with money. Give it to your child to put up for you. Give it to your significant other to put up for you that two to five dollars a week or paycheck and before you know it and don't beg for it back if you know they're going to be the type of person who will not give it back to you that's the person that you want to give it to but they don't care if you beg or plead it needs to be like an emergency but give it to them if you don't want to put it in the bank for the cert you know certain reasons as i said that you'll see it and you'll want to spend it or if you don't have a bank account it's the perfect thing to do and something else i just thought about maybe get a money order or something or i don't know maybe a travel check i don't know i just it just popped in my head but just try this way these five things that i suggested also with the bonus of giving it to a friend or a family member that you trust or your significant other give it to them to hold for you maybe give you an envelope or give them an envelope and now they're making these cash envelopes that could be your savings and you just put it in there every paycheck and then or you can get that back let's say you get paid via what is it um direct deposit but you go to the grocery store you buy some groceries ask for that five dollars cash back put it in your envelope right there in your purse or your wallet and then you give it to your family family member friend or significant other so these are just some small ways i do have other ways that i would love to share with you that's why i threw that bonus in there so if you enjoyed today's video and you would love to see more do me a favor come back for more i would love to have you and welcome you to the code so do me a favor hit that subscribe button also hit that notification bell and i'll see you in my next video bye